After Methuselah's death, God waited seven days before destroying the world with a flood. What made God honor this important figure and wait for him for so long? He is the son of Enoch, the father of Lamech, and the grandfather of Noah, the builder of the ark. His grandfather is Seth, born to Adam and Eve and known after the first murder. Methuselah lived 969 years according to the Bible, the longest life in human history. The privilege of living and learning from Adam enabled Methuselah to gain wisdom and guidance. Some believe that Methuselah inherited Adam's and Eve's original clothes, which he left to Noah. Another external book describes the sword of Methuselah that bore the name of God on it, in which he killed in one blow 900,000 demons that inhabited the land and caused people to sin on the way of God. Genesis 7 verse 4 Seven days from now I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. He died seven days before the flood, which symbolizes the days of a memorial in Judaism for the dead. As a result of the fact that he was considered one of the righteous men among mankind before the flood generation, and because the disaster was delayed until the end of his days of a memorial, God delayed and rained the flood for seven days after his death. Genesis 5 verse 29 He named him Noah and said, He will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground the Lord has cursed. Methuselah warned his son Lamech not to name his grandson after the generation of the flood, as he knew they were bewitched and evil, and might even kill Lamech and Methuselah, who were righteous and trained in the ways of God. The generation of the flood strayed from God's path, sinned, and was occupied with shepherding, so God condemned them to famine and terrible drought. When the boy was born, his father named him Noah and Munachim in Hebrew, saying that he would bring comfort to his generation. Methuselah's father, Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam and Eve, is written to have disappeared and ascended to heaven. Genesis 5 verse 24 Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more, because God took him away. In the verses, I mentioned that Enoch had a hard time with the evil ways of the people, and that he was a believing and wise man who went to God. He was one of the people whose image was written without death. Enoch came to earth to teach his son Methuselah to read, write, and calculate, as recounted in detail in the Book of Enoch. The generation of the flood is busy with witchcraft, holding their eyes. They seek rest from the sadness of his work, they were cursed because of Adam's sin, but he does not want to rectify his sin. For the generation of the flood, humanity is not to blame for the famine that came in the days of Lamech, rather, it is a decree from God upon man. Therefore, the current generation is looking for magical solutions to find a remedy for the sorrow brought about by the labor of the earth. The sadness caused by the fact that nature is not normal. With the earth growing thorns and thistles. Does not lead to soul searching and correcting of sin by the people of the flood generation. But rather to irritability and a search for contemporary satisfaction. The insatiability of humanity leads them to the darkest places of their lust, which knows no rest. The name, Noah, implies rest and comfort, which the person who sees himself in a cursed world is looking for. It is necessary to guard against Noah becoming part of that nervousness, which will lead all of humanity, with Noah at its center, to death and loss. The sorcerers can make Noah's powers similar to theirs, but if he stays away from them, he can be comfortable in the world. Provided he knows how to overcome his nervousness and make his wishes come true immediately. So that Noah would not be swept away in the vortex of the flood. Methuselah disguised the rest and comforted them with Noah's name. The work of comfort requires the comforter to discover the truth within himself and to tap into his inner powers which are capable of dealing with grief. Methuselah should stand before the generation of the flood. 
and declare that there is no magic solution in comfort and rest. There is no expression full of holy words, but a prayer for real work and repentance. Comfort reveals to a person that a new level has grown within him. Like a noble flower before it bears fruit. The hunger and the drought should awaken man to understand that he is not comfortable in the trap of sin. Methuselah's recognition that work is the main thing and not just a means. Is what gives him a long life. Wisdom in an attempt to impart patience, faith, and a sense of contentment to those around them, must make the most of our time until the flood. Humanity, with all its powers, is ripe to live a natural life full of labor, contentment, and satisfaction, and should not fade away in the clouds of the flood. During the seven days of Methuselah's memorial, a light appeared from a kind of world to come, calling everyone to look at the righteous Methuselah and learn from his ways and repent. Although the generation of the flood did not hear his voice, and even his son was not able to do so, but Methuselah knew the future to come. According to the book of Micah, he is one of the seven shepherds, seven well-known figures of Israel's leaders from Jewish history. Micah 5 verse 4 and he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. We will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders. What sets the seven shepherds apart from other leaders of Israel throughout their generations? Is that they not only influenced history, but also continue to lead Israel internally through all generations, even to this day. The shepherds are the fathers of the Israelites. Whether they are the biological fathers, like the three patriarchs, or the spiritual fathers, like Joseph and David. The shepherds are called that because they are leaders and breadwinners. Just like the shepherd who leads the flock. In simple words, the sheep they shepherd are the souls of Israel. Who are the shepherds leading and sustaining the soul's mental powers? The shepherds are, as mentioned, the leaders of Israel who guide the Israelites and teach them the right way. The first man Adam, on the sixth day after the creation of the world. God created the first Adam in his image and placed him in heaven. Adam was the partner of Eve, the first woman. After they sinned and ate from the tree of knowledge, which God had commanded them not to eat. They were expelled from Eden and punished. One of man's punishments was death, to which he was sentenced. And all the creatures of the world following him were allotted one thousand years of life. Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, was born after Cain murdered his brother Abel. Therefore, all humanity after the flood descends from Seth's descendants. Seth lived for 912 years. Methuselah, the son of Enoch, lived longer than all other people and survived until the flood. Consequently, the name Methuselah became a symbol of longevity. King David is the father of the line of the house of David from which the Messiah will come. As per Jewish tradition, his life story is full of trials, obstacles, and struggles which he overcame with strength, ultimately rising to the peak of human achievement. Abraham, the first father, is one of the fathers of the nation. He was born to his father, Terah, in the city of Haran, moved from there to the land of the Chaldeans, and was commanded by God. Jacob, one of the fathers and the son of Isaac and Rebekah, is the third of the patriarchs of the nation. He is the twin brother of Esau and the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. Moses, nicknamed the Lord of the Prophets, was God's messenger to redeem the Israelites from Egypt, their teacher of the Bible, and their leader in the desert. He was born in Egypt while the Israelites were enslaved there. The first generations, between Adam and Noah, were constantly possessed by demons. According to another Jewish tradition, after Cain murdered Abel, Adam lived estranged and far from Eve for 130 years. In the end, 
they reconciled and gave birth to Seth. But while they lived alone, Adam lived with Lilith. And they gave birth to demons whose sole purpose was to cause humans to sin. Immediately, God gave strength to the righteous Methuselah, and he engraved the indescribable God name on his sword, killing 900,000 demons in one shot strike. He continued to kill until Agrimus, one of the senior demons, approached and stood in front of Methuselah and asked him to cease. Methuselah spared the remaining demons, who then hid away from humanity in the wilderness, mountains, and oceans. Eventually, Methuselah's sword was given to Noah, and then to Abraham, who used it during the giant wars. Abraham subsequently passed it on to Isaac, Esau, and Jacob. It is not clear what happened to the sword after Jacob owned it. This is the story of Methuselah, the man who lived for about 1,000 years and is regarded as the oldest person in all of humanity. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. See you next time.